Hey folks, Bob here. So, uh, uh, on the, uh, Cordoba, looks like I didn't get the door closed or somebody's opened it. Oh, there we go. Uh, so, I uh, stopped by this parts store today and got a, uh, got a gas cap. Let me, uh, let me flip you around here. Yeah, so, I got a gas cap. It's not my rallies. Uh, I don't know if it's going to fit or not. They're having a monsoon up here. It just it finally quit. Let's see here. Ooh, gosh, that thing is hard to... Now, the guy asked me if I wanted a tether one, and I said, yeah, I'll take a tether one. Look what it ended up with. Non-tethered. Let's see if you will smell in there. It smells okay. I think we got a good clean gas tank. Oh yeah. Yeah, that seems to fit okay. Alright. Hmm. I ain't gonna do this in case we need it. Still works, I guess, but it just looks like crap. But another thing, he uh, he said, uh, I'm going to check the antifreeze in. He said, I've never checked the antifreeze car. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, I didn't have antifreeze in it, but it didn't. But uh, So I checked it this morning. Sure enough, it's, it needs antifreeze. So I uh, bought a full strength because it's all water in it right now. So I'm going to see if I can't get some antifreeze in this thing because it's supposed to get... 18 degrees I think in a few days so let me do that okay guys so I got the petcock loose and you can see it's a little bit of green in the water but I'm gonna let some of it drain out and uh it's raining I'm having a damn rain but I need to get this done because it's gonna get cold and I don't want to lose this engine I don't want it to bust but uh I wish I could save that water, but that pan's dirty. And I just don't want to take the time to clean it because I'm between hard showers. So we'll let a little drain out, put some 100% some green in, give us a good little mix, I think, start the car up, see where we're at. And, uh, you know, let that drain a little bit. I'll cut you back on here in a second. Another thing, this car has the torsion bars that go sideways. They go, see this is the end of the torsion bar from the pasture side, and this is the torsion bar here, and it curves around and goes over to the right side. It's called transverse torsion bars, and of course that's right in the way of where the pet cock needs to be draining. Uh, normally the tar torsion bars on the regular prices go in the back of the uh, lower control arm right in here where it hooks to the chassis to the K-frame and then it runs straight back about, I don't know, about three foot or so. But they, uh, this is an imp supposedly an improved design. I seem to like it. They, they seem to handle a little better. But they got a lot of rubber bushings on it. It's a ride. You can see right here is rubber bushings. By the way, those look pretty good. But, uh, I want a little bit more drain out. All right, guys, you reckon that's a gallon? This is a yellow tub, and you can still see it's pretty clear. So that, uh, that was some weak antifreeze. I think we got close to a gallon there. So I'm going to put a gallon of fresh, 100% pure green antifreeze in it, start the car back up, and let it circulate, and see, what, see where we're at. All right, guys, it started raining hard on me, and the wind on this side is messed up. Something else, I guess it was wet in here. Let's see if it'll start up. Fire. Uh, probably got enough gas in it. Not even hitting. That's the thing about when you got a car and ain't got the damn gas in it. And it's sitting at an angle like it is on this trailer on down the hill. I'm gonna catch hell getting this thing to start so I can circulate this antifreeze. I 
mineral gas, so it's flooded. Let's pat it a couple more times. <laughs> Hold it down all the way. Oh, it fired finally. Let's not mess with it no more. We'll come out here in the morning. It's not going to start. It's raining like the Dickens. Uh, I'm thinking the radiator may settle a little bit. Could probably get a little more in it. It was spilling out of the funnel. So I lost some antifreeze. It's okay. Uh, let me, uh, I'll come back here in the morning when it's supposed to be a little better weather tomorrow. Look at there. It started up. We got a, we got a uh, what is this light here? Brake light, yeah, it works the brakes on. We'll leave it on too. Let it run. Let it warm up a little bit. I wonder where my windshield light here they are. I don't have windshield wipers. That whole switch feels funny. Think about these cars, you can't get anything for them. Well, I shouldn't say you can't get anything, but I seriously doubt that wiper switch is available. Let's see if we got a radio. Yeah, we got a radio. I'm gonna let it sit here and run a little bit. It don't have a gauge. It is so foggy in here, I can't see. What the hell? Okay, that's oil pressure. This is the water temperature. It does not have a gas, yeah, got a gauge. Okay, I don't know if it works or not. So much humidity. Good lord. I'm going to turn you off, let this thing run a little bit. Okay, guys, so uh, put a little antifreeze in the car and uh, started up, as you saw, in the rain. Finally did start, took forever, and uh, let it run for a little bit, and it's, it's the, 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 I guess because they ran straight water, it's very dirty. Uh, I still don't think I have enough antifreeze to be safe, but uh, we're gonna start it up again today. It's nice, nice, beautiful, sunshiny day, the very next day, and the storm's gone, and uh, we're gonna start it up, let it run, and circulate that uh, coolant a little bit better. I put a little bit more in it this morning. It settled overnight. And I probably put another cup full in it this morning. So we're gonna let it circulate that. So this car is hard to start. Uh, so let's we'll give me a minute here. I'm gonna jump in it and see if we can get it started. And then we're gonna unload it from the trailer a little bit later on, okay? Okay, so it's uh, started up a lot better than I thought it was going to start up. It took a little bit, but 
It's running, it's running okay. That starter motor, Lord, it's making a noise. I've not heard a Chrysler starter make before, so it's, it may need to be replaced. But, uh, whoo, anyhow, let's run. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and uh, we'll check the antifreeze again. And uh, I'll get you a picture of what it looks like. So, for now, we'll cut you off. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, that's what we got right there. Uh, don't look too terrible. I let, you know, I let the car run for quite a bit. It kicked the fast idle down two, two notches. It was still about 1,100 or so. Uh, it was definitely circulating. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got something stopped up here. It wasn't going into I opened the cap up. It spit all out. But uh, I want to drain a little bit more out. It's showing plus 20. I checked it with two different testers right here. And I'm getting a one ball plus 20, and I got another ball that's slowly dropping. So maybe plus 15, I guess. I don't know. I'm not comfortable with that. It's supposed to get, it can often get low teens at nights here in North Carolina, this part of North Carolina. So I'm going to drain a little antifreeze, more antifreeze out, and replace it with fresh straight antifreeze okay let's drain out some more that's definitely a little darker green but not much darker huh? that's what came out of it it's it just looks like dirty old water to me i don't see any oil so i just think it's dirty that's what happens when you run straight water in them i just don't like doing that Anyway, I went and got my magnet out, and I was putting the magnet around the car while the compressor. And uh, this car is pretty damn solid. I've already gone around the whole car. Locker panel, lower fender, the back of the lower fender. And the door, more rocker panel. It's sticking. So anyway, when you get back here at the back, where they typically rust, Everything looks good. I don't think this car has any major rust in it. Now, right here is a rust bubble, and it's sticking pretty good. So it's actually sticking better there than it is here. So there may be some Bondo there, but a skim coat. I can see like it's been repainted there at one point. Uh, right up in here, sticks pretty good. There's some more rust right there. Let's see here. Yeah, very fixable though. That would be on this side over here though. It's a little different. It's a little bit worse. Got to get on it though. As you see. It still sticks pretty good. stick there though I'm thinking there's some bondo right there but yeah, what's going on right here it's so damn wet I don't want to get in the mud I think yeah we got something happening right here definitely that's okay right, and anyway all down this side is good it sticks good pin magnet Clean it off, dirty. Maybe not so good there, but as you go down, might be a little skim coat in the door. I don't know. I mean, this door may be real thin metal, too. Anyway, as you guys can see. She's not a Bondo queen, that's for sure. This car would not make it at Field Agent Motors. <laughs> that was a joke intended to my buddy, Mr. Sasquatch. All right, let me get the camera mounted back up.
okay, well, you guys are gonna get a kick out of this. I got the truck and trailer out of the way. It's, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll drop another tomorrow. I can back, I usually back the trailer back down in here. But can't do that day. Let me get them Cordova. What I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull down here beside the trailer and back, back up if I can. I don't know if I can do that. Well, let's find out. Okay guys, well that went better than I thought it was going to go. Uh, I just uh, let it idle. It was idling pretty high. It's got a little mist to it. So uh, I had about 60 horsepower <laughs> and uh, kind of put a little pressure on the emergency brake, just enough for it to drag and uh, when it started moving a little faster, then I hit a little harder. Just kind of used the emergency brake as a regular brake and then once it came to a complete stop, I released the emergency brake. So it wasn't too bad. We got it. So. That's where we're gonna set it. I may pull it a little bit further forward. Probably should make sure I, let me pull it a little bit further that I look at it from this angle. Get just a little bit further more forward, I can get around it with my trailer if I need to. And uh, yeah. Okay, I have decided what I'm gonna do here, guys. Uh, I've got some production numbers for you. Uh, 1980 Cordoba, which is what this is. Uh, 46,000 and some change total Cordobas made. 46,000, that's all, it's a bad year. In my opinion, the second generation was the better looking car. That's just strictly my opinion. I've owned now both. Now this is an LS. They only made the LSs in 80, 81, and 82, three year run. So in 1980, 3,252 LSs were made. So 3,252 out of 4,600 to 46,000 is some change. Uh, now here's another thing I didn't know. I always thought the LS was a sporty performance model. It is not. It should have been. Should have been a 300. They had a 379. 
my understanding is a handful of 300s came out of the assembly line and then they switched it to LS. I don't know why they did that, but it looks like the LS was the base model from what I can find out on the internet. It's hard to find anything out of these cars. They're not well loved. Uh, Apparently, uh, slant sixes were quite popular in these cars. Slant six one barrels. Now they also made a super six with a two barrel carburetor. I don't know how many of those. I wish I could find some breakdown of these LS cars, especially the 80 models, but all of them really, all, all three years. But uh, yeah, we're gonna, for now, we're gonna stay with the slant six. Uh, it does smoke as you saw a little bit. I don't know what that could be. Valve seals, rings, maybe it just needs to be run hot, reseat the rings. Maybe it's uh, the carburetor washing down a little bit. Uh, motor seems to run okay. It's got a little bit of a dead miss. Uh, currently, there are no plans to do any kind of uh, engine swap. We're gonna stay with the Slant 6 for now. It runs good enough I can drive it around. I don't know if it's gonna pass inspection. Well, I guess it will pass inspection North Carolina on the 80 model. They don't, they don't do a tailpipe. Uh, just the safety, so uh, I gotta look at the firewall. Uh, there is a little bit of rot in the floor, especially in the back. Look at the firewall, see how clean the firewall is. I'm a little concerned about the tape around the cowl, what they were trying to do there. If the firewall is rotted out, then this car probably is just going to be a race car at that point. There's no sense in, I mean, to spend $30,000 restoring this car and getting fifteen to 18000 for it. I don't love it that much. I'll just buy another one. So uh, I got my three disco cars kind of right here together. 78 Magnum, 78 Diplomat. Uh, and the Cordoba LS 1980. So that's the plans, folks.